Our next guest is Dwayne Perkins. The actor, writer, and producer is known for his work on the Upshaws and the Saved by the Bell reboot. The New York Times named him one of the queer young comics redefining American humor. Now Perkins is co-writer, producer, and star of the new comedy horror film, The Blackening. Now here's what it does. It follows a group of black friends who reunite for a weekend getaway and find themselves trapped by a crazy killer. And through the humor, it takes on racial tropes in Hollywood. Here's a clip. I heard screaming. Is everything okay? Ranger White? Is that you? In the flesh. Is this good or bad? Wait. How do we know we can trust him? No offense. I'm one of the good ones. Oh, that does not help. They all say that. That actually makes you seem more suspicious. You can trust me. Seriously. If I got an invite to the cookout, I'd be honored, but I wouldn't go. And why the not? Because I know my presence in that all-black space would be a disturbance, and undo it being an all-black space. That's a pretty good answer. I'm so mm -hmm. worse than me. Look, we gotta lower our hands. Lower away. Okay, great. Look, I've never been so happy to see a white savior. Somebody's trying to kill us. Please help us, please. Dwayne Perkins joins us right now, all glammed out. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing very well. Thank you guys for having me. Okay, so before we start, I have to say, as you can see, we love our, our hair. Uh, and, and we are doing our thing, this trio, this morning. But you won the award uh, for you. best hair. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the idea behind the blackening is that if black people always die in the beginning of horror films, what happens if everybody is black? Exactly. Uh, so, so how does this movie answer that question? Uh, it answers it by uh, letting people know that there is no answer on how to quantify blackness. Uh, and if you watch the movie, you'll see exactly how we did it. I don't want to give away too many spoilers. Of course. Uh, but there are a lot of ways in which we um, dissect tropes and really... Um, speak to the history that black people have had in horror in a very fun, entertaining way. Now, The Blackening is also based on a Comedy Central sketch. Um, this was a handful of years ago. Um, so how does it feel to see this come to life? Uh, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, I just really didn't anticipate where this could go. Yeah. I wrote a sketch because I needed to write a sketch. Right. And kind of every step of the way, I thought it was like a new win when we because the sketch started on stage. Right. And when we filmed it for Comedy Central, I said, wow, so many more people can see it. And then when it went viral, I said, oh, I've never had something go viral. What a win. And then when Tracy Oliver watched it and called me, and she just said, hey, I think this could be a movie. And I said, well, you know more than me. Uh, so, <laughs> sure. And that right. was an even bigger win. And then TIFF, Tribeca, it just continuously has been so surprising as to how much good has come out of this project. So in the movie, the characters have to basically compete, and they're trying to identify who is the blackest, which everyone is now trying to not be, so they're uh, not the one that's going <laughs> to kill, um, which is absolutely hilarious. As a comedian, how do you navigate that political correctness? Because you're putting some wild things out there, some stereotypes, but also having fun with it. Yes, uh, I, I feel like I've been asked this question often just because comedy and there's this whole idea of, like, what can you cannot say? And I just think it's very simple to not be offensive. I think if you really think about what you want to say and the intent behind it, that there's nothing that I feel like I cannot justify. Um, and I think it's very easy to kind of give, to speak on these tropes because it's about expanding people's perception of like how they're perceiving these characters, right. particularly black characters, queer characters, and forcing them to question themselves and the boxes that they've created mm -hmm. and using the film to let people know that, oh, we're so much more than what we are being allowed to be. And when you give space to these marginalized voices, to these characters that we only see as tropes, they no longer become tropes, they become fully realized people. So it's not only uh, black characters, right? It's the best gay friend character, or best, yeah, best friend. Mm -hmm. Take it away from there. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, you don't worry about stepping on lines. I, on the other hand, <laughs> this, movie, this movie would hit different if I wrote it. And I was just like, I'm gonna let them find it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so like my character is a gay best friend, and that is a trope that is often used in film as a tool to further the narrative of someone in the lead, which is normally not the queer person. So being able to right. put that person in the forefront and prioritize yeah. that person, it instantly takes away from it being a trope, and you start to see, oh, tropes are just us 
putting people in a box and only allowing them to be one thing. Yeah. But when you let that best that gay best friend actually like give time and space to the friendship, you you realize, oh, this is a real relationship that has legs, that can mm. be a plot, that the gay best friend could also be a villain. They could be a hero. There's just so much more mm -hmm. that they can be. And as a queer actor, I felt like I've often been put in boxes. So having the opportunity to really push that narrative forward is something I'm so proud of and uh, very grateful that I got to play that part. With the writer strike going on, uh, you know, I, I'm curious to get your opinion about the landscape of the industry. Being a writer yourself, mm -hmm. um, you know, I know you understand the, the concept of not just finding your place, but occupying space yeah. with your elbows out. Um, how do you feel about what's going on with the writer's strike? And then real quick, what would you, what type of advice would you give to someone who is trying to break into this industry as a writer? I think what you said is very true about taking up space. Uh, and I think you have to really have a strong sense of self to be able to stand in these spaces that are very challenging. And I think as a queer black man growing up in Chicago, I had those challenges very early. So I just really was able to build a strong self-love, a strong sense of self. So when I enter these spaces, I don't have fear. Yeah. I know that I can bring something that is not here and that's why I'm here and that is my purpose. Yeah. Uh, and I, and in regards to the WGA strike, that is very much in line of art. Like, you have to give people the support to create good art. Uh, and if they don't have that, then the art will suffer. Yeah. And so I'm very much in line. Give the writers what they need so that art can continue to be artful. Well said. Dwayne Perkins, we appreciate you. Thank you for <laughs> Thank stopping you by. So Thank you. The Blackening opens in theaters uh, this Friday. Yeah.